Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to uh, the uh, OTA annual general meeting. Appreciate all of you making the trek in this uh, lousy spring weather. I wish I could have ordered up better weather uh, so we could have played tennis outside even, but uh, unfortunately that's not to be today. But I do appreciate you coming out today and um, and uh, participating in this. It should be a, a good meeting. I'm looking forward to it. We'll get through the business. We've got a, a short demo here after we adjourn and then we have some uh, breakout sessions which you've seen in your agenda. I think will be really um, uh, really exciting and informative for you. So appreciate that. Officially, I hereby call uh, to order the 2012 Annual General Meeting of the Ontario Tennis Association and ask OTA Executive Director Jim Boyce to read the formal notice of the meeting. Jim. Thanks, Scott. <clears throat> Each year I get this honor. Okay, please take note that the 2012 Annual General Meeting of the Members of the Ontario Tennis Association will be held at the Rexall Centre Players Lounge, One Shoreham Drive, Toronto, Ontario, on Saturday, April the 13th, 2013, beginning at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time to conduct the business detailed on the agenda enclosed herewith. We're really high tech this year. You see me passing batons back and forth. The mic, we've got this little wireless device. We, we are taping, uh, we are videotaping this and one of the seminar sessions. So assuming it all turns out well, we can actually post it on YouTube for those that uh, couldn't attend. So appreciate that. So again, welcome. Thank you everyone for attending. Um, this is a, obviously a business meeting, the AGM, but it's, it's also very much uh, to thank all of you for all the hard work as volunteers, the time you spend in your club uh, with your, uh, your members, uh, thanking you for all the hard work. And uh, so uh, uh, do uh, take part in the, the food that we have. We have lunch we'll bring in a little bit later. And as I say, the seminars, hopefully they'll be inf informative. Uh, a special thanks to all our sponsors that are here today. I hope you had a chance to check out their, their, their tables um, around the room at the back. Uh, and uh, so I'd like to just recognize uh, uh, all the sponsors, the, the, the folks that are here today. We have uh, later on, a little bit later on from Tennis Canada, we'll have uh, Brandon, Sean, and Jordan Carroll. We'll talk about the Rogers Cup. We have Merchant of Tennis here, our preferred retailer for the OTA, that's uh, Scott Switzer. We have from Babolat, the OTA's uh, official apparel and footwear sponsor, that's Brian Caulfield. Wilson, our official ball sponsor, uh, Blair Rickers. We have from Head, our official racket sponsor, Tammy Sangster. Hope you've had a chance to uh, talk to these folks, RCS. Of course, uh, Troy Russell is our official court equipment supplier. And we have a couple of representatives from Screenscape, Peter Wallace and Lisa Silveria. And as well, uh, I haven't seen him, but uh, we should have uh, Todd Ord here from uh, the president of Whitby Tennis Club. He's representing as well the Intercounty Tennis Association. He has some material on uh, uh, junior leagues as well that uh, he, uh, I think he has some pamphlets that he's uh, giving out. And of course we have uh, representative, uh, representatives from Phil Pot, Cecily Parker, and Sharon Arnold about their uh, used racket donation program as well. So I hope you had a chance to see all of them and uh, talk with them. Uh, as well, I'd like to recognize uh, uh, the uh, the OTA board that are here today and the regional chairs that are present. So I'm going to call everyone's name out and uh, as I call your name out, please stand and if you could hold your uh, applause to the end, I'd appreciate that. First, our uh, officers. We have Liz Wood, who's a VP of Membership and Regional Development. We have Simon Bartram, VP of uh, Player Development. We have Michelle LeCavalier, uh, our past president. There he is. Rob Nichols, our VP of Finance and Administration. Jackie Sheehy, uh, VP of Marketing and Communication. There she is at the door. 
And representing the OT regions, we have uh, Steve Andrews, North York <coughs> Tennis Association there at the back. Hi, Steve. We have Sid Schechter, uh, Chair of North Central Region. We have Diane Weatherby, uh, Chair of Scarborough Region, STF. We have Adrian Baldeo, uh, Chair of Toronto Region. There he is. Uh, Julio DeCresci, the Chair of West Central Region. Julio, somewhere, there he is at the back. Wayne Sajan, uh, Southwest Region. And we also have a, a number that couldn't be here today, Miro Ejim from North Region, uh, Dale Roberts from the East Region, and Sean Sweeney, who's chair of the Ontario Region, the uh, Nor North uh, Capital Tennis Association. So give it all those uh, volunteers a round of applause for all the great work. Now if I could uh, call upon Jim Boyce to introduce the OT staff and outline uh, the schedule for events for today. Thanks, Scott. <clears throat> I'm, I'm wired. Okay, um, before I do the staff, I'd like to review the schedule of events. Um, right now we're in the annual general meeting at 11.20, from 11.20 to 12.30, we'll be doing the lunch and awards. And at 12.30, for 45 minutes, we'll be doing the breakout sessions. Now, I'd like a show of hands so that we can coordinate these sessions on who has decided which session to attend. Could I have a show of hands of people that are interested in the generic bylaws? That's a good number. <laughs> Strategic plan review? <laughs> Attracting and retaining new members. Uh-oh. That's what we thought. Well, that's what we thought. <laughs> um, just hold on a sec here. Great. Now what I'm going to do is introduce... Oh, sorry. And then at the end... We're going to play some tennis between 1.30 and 3.30. Um, you'll be playing in the bubbles. If you don't know, the bubbles are, the bubble is behind the COE. You'll change in the building, but you'll have to get to, this, to the bubble, and you can't go through the COE because they're writing exams. So you have to walk around the side of the, of the building and go, th the best way is to go through the parking lot and go around the corner to the left, and you can get into the COE from there. Um, is there anything else on here I need to do? Okay, I think that's it. Um, I'd like to introduce the OTA staff that are attending today. Jay Neal, the guy that basically puts this whole thing together along with Gulshad Poonja, Jolene Joseph, Samantha Pagnata, David Lee, and Rimsey K, I can't pronounce his last name and I give up. <laughs> and Eli Schwartz, can I have a round of applause for your OTA staff? <laughs> now we have two volunteers attending today, one of which, uh, Julianne Tuvi, has volunteered for this event, I found out today, for the last 15 years. Where are you? Julianne? And as always, we have Gus Moorhart around someplace, probably doing some work somewhere. He's also in attendance. He's our number one volunteer. So uh, another round for our great volunteers. That's it for me, right? Yeah. Thanks, Jim. Sorry, I just wanted to add in, in terms of the seminars, we did that little uh, show of hands just to make confirm we had the split right and it made perfect sense to us. So in this room, Jim and David Lee will do the uh, how to uh, improve or increase your, your membership and, and promote your membership at the club. Uh, at Ball Crew, 
room B, which is down the hall, and we have uh, uh, my wife Kim and Anka will, when it gets time for that, they'll uh, help usher those that are interested in that seminar down to ball, uh, ball crew B room, and that's the strat plan review, and that's, uh, I'll be doing that session. And then just around the corner from there is the ball crew A room, and uh, Michelle LeCavalier and, and Rob Nichols will do the, the bylaw overview. So probably at about 20 after 12 or so, we'll ask everyone to start moving to their respective rooms so that we can start on time. Mm -hmm. 45 minutes, there'll be a Q&A in there, and uh, all the presentations, uh, the information will be posted on our uh, online for you. So we have no worries uh, about uh, having copies or anything like that. Uh, before we get started as well with the, uh, the agenda and uh, all the, re the rest of the, uh, the meeting, I'd like to briefly talk about the voting procedures. Uh, many of you, uh, or at least one rep from the club, should have received two cards when you came in, a green card and in support of a motion, and a red card uh, against a, a motion. So the, the, the clubs are entitled to, to have two reps attending this meeting, but please ensure there is only one voter per club. So we have a number of motions today for approval. So when asked for a proposer and a seconder, please raise your hand and we'll have Jolene uh, uh, provide you the microphone or actually Kim or Anka. Anka has a wireless microphone there. So uh, anytime anyone needs to speak or if we can't hear you, we'll use the microphone so that we get that information correctly and record it for our minutes. And as I say, any other questions that we have uh, over the course of the meeting, we can use that microphone. So I uh, appreciate it. And I think we have spare batteries this year too. <laughs> okay, first on the agenda is the approval of the agenda. Are there any changes or additions to the agenda as published? Okay, if there are none, can I have a motion to accept the agenda as published? Andrew Kokel, Allison Tennis Club. Can I have a, uh, a seconder? Please state your name. State your name, Ken. Ken Burlock Aldershot. All those in favor, raise your green card. All those against, raise your red card. Okay, the motion is uh, carried. Thank you for that. Next is the approval of last year's uh, AGM minutes. Are there any changes to the minutes of the 2012 AGM as provided in your annual report on page four? Okay, if there are none, could I have a motion to accept the minutes as published? State your name, sir. Robert Collette, Rockcliffe. Robert Collette, Rockcliffe. Seconder. We'll go to, yes. Ron Morrow, Grimsby. All those in favor, raise your green card. Okay, all opposed, your red card. Okay, motion carried, thank you for that. Next on the agenda is the approval of the financials for 2012. So I'll ask the VP of Finance, Rob Nichols, to review that statement for the year ending December 31st, 2012. And that st starts on page 11 of your report. Uh, thank you, Scott. Um, so for those of you who have uh, your uh, materials open, the financials start on page 11. Um, as you'll see, once again, we received a clean audit opinion from our auditors, uh, Clark Henning. Um, before this went to the executive committee, I sat down with them and went through their... Sorry. Let me, let me start again. Um, as, as you will have seen, once again, we received a clean audit opinion uh, from uh, Clark Henning, who are our auditors and have been our auditors for a while, um, before we approved the financial statements at the executive uh, committee and board. 
uh, I sat down with them and went through the work they uh, had done uh, with RIMSI, uh, and and there were really no issues related to uh, to this year's to this year's work. So, uh, of course, we got a, a clean audit opinion, uh, but uh, beyond that, there were no significant issues uh, that we that we had to discuss. Um, if we move on to the second page uh, in the financials, uh, this is our, our balance sheet. Um, we are in essentially the same solid position uh, that we have been in for the past uh, uh, couple of years uh, with net assets of around the $300,000 mark. It's slightly up over the past two years, which reflects the fact that we made a modest profit uh, this year from, from our various operating activities. Uh, one, one item to note for those of you that looked at this carefully, um, you'll note that there was a uh, seeming decline in our cash balance from the position uh, at the uh, end of the prior two years. Um, that's, that's not in fact the case. We're actually in a better cash position. Uh, and the reason for that is that you'll note that there's a new item on the, on the 2012 column for investments which reflects a decision that was taken by the board in looking at our, our cash management to make sure that our cash position was spread out amongst financial institutions with a view to trying to ensure that we always stayed under the uh, deposit insurance limits with any one institution. Not that any of the institutions that we deal with are on the verge of bankruptcy, but uh, as, as other businesses have found, you know, managing investments isn't what the OTA is about, we, we got to preserve our cash position. So we, we have spread it around amongst institutions to keep under the, uh, the CDIC limit of $100,000 for deposits. So those investments, which are a, a new item, are in fact uh, GICs uh, with, with a couple of uh, different banks. Because they're more than a year term, they show up as investments rather than cash, but, but these are cashable GICs and secure. So I just bring that uh, to your attention if there were any questions about why our cash position uh, seemed to have moved down. In fact, it hasn't, and we are uh, in as good a shape this year as we were last year. Um, we can move to the, uh, to the financial statements dealing with uh, our operations now. Rims, if you can pull up the next, uh, next page. Um, <coughs> Uh, so, uh, in terms, as I mentioned, our our net um, our net profit uh, this year was twenty one thousand, uh, as compared with twelve hundred last year. Essentially, that's not a meaningful number. Um, it's a minor positive variance. It could have been a, a minor negative variance. Uh, we budget to try to run flat every year. We're not for profit. Uh, we're essentially trying to match our revenues. Uh, with our program expenditures, and and Jim has done a very good job in ensuring um, that that's uh, that that's the case uh, this year. There's a couple of swings and roundabouts as as there always are uh, when you're operating an organization with a million and a half dollar budget. Um, I think I'll get to that when I get to. I, I included some pie charts and analysis, not not too much detail, which will which will provide maybe a better way of speaking to this. Um, but overall, we were pretty much on budget. Uh, despite some pluses and minuses uh, in terms of our overall operations. The, the last financial statement that's included uh, in the package uh, is the cash flow. Um, because we don't have a lot of significant uh, fixed assets, uh, the cash flow statement pretty much tracks, uh, tracks the, uh, the income statement with a few timing differences uh, on receivables being the main difference. Um, Rimsey, maybe we could pull up the slides, uh, the pie chart slides. Uh, I was going to just talk for a second about um, kind of the the MDNA on uh, the pluses and minuses this year. So the first chart uh, I put up uh, is is a pie chart breaking down where we've got our revenue from, and I included 2010 uh, because 2010 really shows the significant um, change. Um, so you know it's kind of a kind of a quadrant where we get roughly a quarter of our uh, of, of our revenues from, from different sources. Participant fees, which is tournament uh, certification and things like that, has re remained pretty steady and will probably remain uh, pretty steady. Uh, sponsorship, uh, which is the purple, uh, has de declined a little bit, declined a little bit 
uh, in uh, from 2011. Uh, 2011 was a little bit of a high water mark uh, for sponsorship because of a couple of kind of one-off things that uh, uh, that happened then, uh, and will probably remain pretty much constant. Um, the the area where you can see the change over the three-year period uh, is is the portion of the pie made up of grants uh, and of membership fees. Um, and you know, as as we're all aware, we put through membership fee increases uh, in recent years. Uh, that's the reason that the proportion of our revenue that's coming from membership fees uh, has been growing uh, at a relatively significant clip over the last few years. By contrast, the proportion of money that we're getting from government grants has been coming down, uh, not so much in the 2011 to 2012 period, but you can see it between 2010 and 2012, a fairly significant decline. Now, I broke out Little Aces um, as a specific grant program. I could have, I could have, it's a bit arbitrary, I could have broken out some other specific grant program. But it's an example of, of grant programs that are tied to very specific short-term projects. Uh, and so they're not, dis they're not discretionary in the sense that the OTA gets a, gets a, a pot of money to, to apply to, to a general program. Uh, it's quite specific and targeted. That's a trend that is probably going to continue. And so I wanted to just kind of show the way these, these offsets work um, to illustrate why uh, we've had to kind of ensure that we have moved to a, a funding model that is more reliant on membership fees and participation uh, than on getting money uh, from government. Because at the end of the day, membership fees and participant fees are things that we can influence and control. <laughs> government fees, despite the best, uh, government grants, despite the best efforts of Jim, are something that are ultimately a political decision that we have to be prepared uh, to go against us uh, on occasion, even though we've done well uh, in the last uh, in the last few years. Um, so that's all I wanted to say on the revenue side. Uh, can we go to the next one? Uh, on the expense side, um, and this may look like a, a bit of detail, but the reason I wanted to put this up is that for for you know accounting presentation reasons, the breakdown on the expense side is pretty. Uh, is pretty basic. It you know it just breaks down between direct cost of programs and general administrative and payroll costs, uh, which is fine from an accounting perspective, but obscures what's going on because most of the staff who work here at the OTA have pretty direct responsibilities related to programming, and so this chart and, and these numbers are an attempt to show kind of the, the the real allocation of, of where our revenues go. Uh, in terms of operation. So in terms of overhead items, the, the, the two items that you could perhaps fairly categorize as overhead, uh, management governance and general administration, uh, and, and, and revenue generation, although even that is, is debatable. Um, you can see, uh, you know, for the last year is 25% of, of our operating expenses, uh, and is coming down uh, and headed in the right direction. Things that are program related, um, you know, be it at the community competitive development level, high performance development, club support services, you know, tennis, outre tennis outreach, uh, and, and club and member communications, that's 75% uh, of our money is spent uh, in those areas. Um, and, and, and that's as it should be. And we're going to try to continue to grow the proportion of money that's spent on services to you folks rather than on just you know, uh, operational matters that, uh, that are unavoidable. Um, so with that, I wasn't going to say anything more about the financial statements for the last year, unless there are any questions. There are no questions. Can I have a motion to approve our 2012 audited financial statements, please? Stuart Tether, Davisville. Okay, thank you, Stuart. Can I have a seconder for that motion? Uh, Natalie Wong, uh, Stephen Leacock. Uh, all in favor of the motion? Any opposed? That's carried. Um, the other item of business that I have to attend to uh, is the uh, approval of the appointment uh, of our auditors for the coming year. Uh, and uh, unsurprisingly, we're not proposing any change uh, in our auditors. Clark Henning has done it for uh, a, a number of years. Um, 
they're efficient, uh, they, are a, they do it at a reasonable cost on a reasonable timetable, and so I, I, at the executive committee we saw no reason, to, no reason to change that. But we do need to have a motion uh, to approve their appointment from the membership. So if I could have a motion to approve the uh, appointment of uh, Clark Henning for this year. Thank you, Alan. And a seconder, please. Thank you. Uh, all in favor? Any opposed? I declare that carried. Okay.